Hey everybody, Tom here. Um, we are going to continue our discussion about DNA replication. In the last videos, we were talking about DNA replication in prokaryotes, specifically E. coli. And DNA replication is going to be similar in eukaryotes. Uh, with some key differences that we need to talk about in this video. Um, so what are those differences? Let's see. So uh, they are going to be dealing with replication origins. A second difference is going to be uh, it's going to deal with the nucleosomes, which are present in eukaryotes and not present in prokaryotes. And uh, the third difference is going to do with the fact is going to deal with the fact that chromosomes in eukaryotes are linear. So uh, our discussion of replication in eukaryotes will focus on the differences, and the differences have to do with the number of replication origins, nucleosomes in eukaryotes, and uh, the problem with linear chromosomes, a replication of linear chromosomes, particularly with respect to the ends of those chromosomes. So let's take the first one. Now this one is really simple and what we need to remember is that most prokaryotes like E. coli have a single circular chromosome that makes up the genome and they have a single origin of replication and replication occurs bidirectionally from the origin so all the way to the other side of the chromosome where replication ends. So prokaryotes can replicate their whole genome with one origin of replication. Eukaryotes, however, tend to have many origins of replication along the chromosomes. So if this is one of the chromosomes, let's say in, in humans. Now we can say that there are many replication origins and replication is initiated from each of the origins. So we'll have lots of replication bubbles and replication will occur bidirectionally from each origin and it's important uh, that this happens like this in eukaryotes because you know eukaryotes typically have very very long chromosomes especially humans. And in order to replicate the DNA in, in a quick enough or short enough uh, amount of time to replicate it efficiently, um, eukaryotes need to have lots of origins. So, okay, so there's a difference between replication, DNA replication, in prokaryotes and eukaryotes with respect to origin number in general, right? But there are always exceptions, and I'm sure there are some eukaryotes with very small genomes with a uh, you know, small number of replication origins per chromosome. Okay, so let's take a look at the other uh, second major difference. So nucleosomes. 
So nucleosomes, we haven't talked about the structure of a nucleosome yet, and we are going to do that in this video. Uh, nucleosomes do not exist in bacteria. Nucleosomes are found in eukaryotes. And okay, so what do they look like? So nucleosomes are a combination of DNA and protein, and the protein are proteins are called histones. So we have four histone types here, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. Now we're going to, I'm going to duplicate these and I'm going to show, okay, so there's an H2A here and there's one back here also. So there are two copies of H2B, so one in front and one in the back here. And similarly for histone 3, H3, there are two copies. And same thing for H4. And so this is an octomer of histones. Now, DNA will wrap around this, specifically 147 base pairs of DNA will wrap around the octomer of histones It's going to wrap around 1.65 times. And I'm diagramming the DNA relatively thick here because, so let's say we wrapped around 1.65 times, so not quite two times. So let's say 147 base pairs of DNA wrapped around 1.65 times around the octomer of histones. Uh, what did I want to say? Okay, yeah, so the DNA, the diameter of the DNA we've covered in a previous video is two nanometers. And the diameter of this octomer of histones with the DNA, which we're going to call the nucleosome, is 11 nanometers at its widest point. So we're going to call this the nucleosome. The 147 base pairs of DNA wrapped around the octomer of histones 1.65 times. We're calling this the nucleosome. Some textbooks might call this the uh, nucleosomal core particle. But we will consider this, this the nucleosome. Now there's one other component which is going to be the linker DNA. Now the linker DNA connects to the next nucleosome. Linker DNA. And another type of histone, histone H1, binds to the linker DNA. And the linker DNA, uh, scientists typically say, ranges from 20 to 100 base pairs, um, and, and it may differ um, between different cell types, between different regions of the genome. Um, some species might tend, tend to have smaller linkers between the nucleosomes, but we will say a range of 20 to 100, and we will say an average of 53 base pairs. That allows us to say there are 200 base pairs of DNA, 147, plus 53 associated with one histone octomer and, uh, and the linker here. So, okay, so here's the nucleosome, here's the linker DNA, here's the octomer of histones, here's histone H1. So this right here, this is chromatin. This is how DNA is stored inside the nucleus in eukaryotic cells. So it's never found naked, it's always complex. 
uh, with proteins such as histones. So if we were to extract DNA from a nucleus and visualize it with an electron microscope, we should see something like this, assuming we extracted it properly without separating the proteins from the DNA. And let's say we isolated the DNA from cells that are in S phase, so they're replicating. And what we should see is this sort of beads on a string. pattern here. Now the beads are the nucleosomes. And let's say this is the replication fork. And what you might notice is that we have the nucleosomes associated with, you know, the DNA here before and after the replication fork. That's because there are proteins that are in charge of disassembling nucleosomes ahead of the replication fork and then reassembling them very shortly after replication. So you can see, you know, it, the, the images I have seen, you, you can see that the nucleosomes are back on the DNA shortly after uh, you, you can, after this replication fork. And we don't need to worry about the names of the proteins that do this, but eukaryotic cells do have to account for the nucleosomes and they figured out a way to disassemble and reassemble them on the DNA, DNA shortly after replication. Now, the third thing we want to cover is uh, replication of the ends of the chromosomes, or um, how do you carry out to deal with this, this problem of having linear chromosomes, and how are the ends replicated? And you know, I haven't quite talked about this yet, but there is a problem with replicating the ends of linear chromosomes. And it's kind of a complicated topic, so I will save that topic for its own video, which I will um, put together next. Okay, see you in the next video.